Hello and welcome back to, I was about to call it ESL 1, ESL Pro League Finals. I'm Alex Machine Richardson, joined by Devil Walk and Vendetta. And after, what is safe to say, a little bit of a surprise, us at the desk, it was kind of a... I can almost guarantee you guys were calling 2-0. You were saying that this really should be going Virtus Pro's way with that kind of discrepancy for TSM. It hasn't happened that way. And I mean, we have a very short period of time now, but to maybe summarize what exactly went right for TSM and wrong for v uh, VP. I'm going to start with you, Devil Walk. Well, I mean, they basically got the pick. They picked up the pistol. They kept on going for a picking style, and they just won their duels against lonely VP players who didn't. They, they played a bit too aggressive. Uh, I think they got caught off a lot of times uh, due to the shortage of shortage of shortage of, of uh, smoke grenades right. and um, yeah, especially on the B side, which we talked uh, during the the big break there, uh, which uh, was Cadian's fault. I heard uh, apparently. <laughs> yeah, blame him. Yeah. Uh, so um, you know, we touched that on that subject, but um, what we what was really really interesting was to see that. Basically, every time the CT side had double AWP, they actually picked up a lot of rounds. Like, the AWPs were like the major talk points about this game, I would say. And it was something we had hearted before, just how important that double AWP setup, when you can afford it, was. And how have all your thoughts on that game? Yeah, it was actually a pretty mirrored match in terms of how it played out. The second that Virtus Pro were able to get their hands on, on double AWPs on the CT side, they picked up a, a, quite a few rounds at the end there of the first half. And the same thing for TSM. TSM had a rough start. Of, going into it on their CT side, picks up double orb, and all of a sudden there's this calmness that just surrounds the teams. So that was definitely the big the big thing for both teams, except that TSM were able to get a lot more out of it. The problem that BP ran into was when they played still aggressively with that open Pasha uh, and with Snacks over towards that A-bomb side, which we talked about, they did really good at actually getting information. Sometimes they'd get, even get an entry fight. The problem is they didn't set themselves up to actually back off and work off of that advantage. So, sure, you get an entry frag, but then you lose both of your players towards that A-bomb site, which puts you in a really awkward situation. TSM did better of it when they got the double orb set up. So I think that was the key difference between the two teams. Yep. So with two double orbs really kind of clinching the victory there for TSM, the question then is going over towards Cash. That is going to be map number two. And the question now is, are we going to be seeing a third third? Will be Mirage? And will TSM, do TSM now have a chance? I'm going to start with you, Halvor, because I remember you said, Cash isn't a bad one for TSM. But it's not a bad one at all, and we saw how well Overpass worked for them. If they are able to make their pick style work on, on the T side, and again, the T side for, for TSM on, on both Cash and Overpass weren't that impressive the previous time they played VP. So they can't do much worse, and the CT sides shouldn't be that much affected simply because they could just plop Kadian in in the exact same role as Device Display because Device also picks up the AWP on Cash. So in that sense, I think it's very fair that TSM can actually pick up Cash, which kind of turns our predictions completely on its head. But yeah, Cash, not, not a bad map at all. And so Jonathan, time to pick your brain then, Cash. Let's talk Cash, let's talk T side first. What are you expecting to see out of, uh, who, well, obviously we haven't got the confirmed sides yet, but as a general T half, for those of them, for, to explain to people at home what maybe they're expecting to see. Uh, I'm expecting actually a lot of uh, TSM. They usually actually go like they would boost the vice up in the middle and kind of hold the angle and try to search for picks for a very, very long time. And they would back off from that boost in the middle uh, on T side and actually just decide on a site, basically. Uh, but as we saw on uh, on um, overpass, Kedian actually did all, like huge plays actually some rounds with the AWP. Like he was he was he was really good uh, for being uh, standing and haven't played in, uh, in a long time. Yeah, I was actually very impressed. Obviously, he misses a couple of shots here and there, but everyone does. Pasha also struggled from the same position on CT side. He got into it on T side, and Kadian eventually played very well with that AWP on that A-bomb side. Uh, on, on, regarding VP's T side on Cash, the big hole in the defense they found with TSM previous times was the, was the middle area, and they would do the exact same thing TSM has normally done with the Vice, which basically boost up Pasha into, well, by middle, and just kind of stack people up there and just sit out and wait. Wait for something to happen from TSM. And I wouldn't be too surprised if we actually saw Kadian going towards mid with an AWP. So that could be a potential big deal between Pasha and Kadian if Kadian ends up playing with the AWP there and seeing whether or not TSM are able to figure out what to do. And if, again, VP decides to go straight for mid because it worked during Copenhagen for them, so why would they go away from it? They. I feel they need to test out quite early whether or not TSM have actually fixed that gap in their defense. 
And if they haven't, then VP can definitely capitalize on that and get a massive start on their T side. And now it's time for all of our what's and ifs and buts to be answered as it's time to jump on into cash. It's map two in this best of three. Can TSM clinch it in two or are we going to see a three map? The answers will be provided now by your casters. It's D-Man and Semler. Thank you very much, guys, and welcome back. And uh, so, cash, next map. We've yep. heard what the analysts have to say. What do we make of this one? Virtus Pro TSM, they played each other at um, Starladder and Copenhagen, uh, Copenhagen Games, games series, on this map. Yeah, they, uh, and, and we could say the same for Mirage, because obviously that's another map mm -hmm. they're both big on. Actually, somewhat surprisingly, TSM beat Mirage, uh, beat, beat VP on Mirage, which is VP's home map and normally stomp everyone on. Mm -hmm. So. If VP can pick this one up, they've got to be feeling confident getting back to their effectively home map choice. Yeah. But TSM, who everyone said was going to be 2-0, already got one map up. Could they pull something else surprising out on cash, which is a map that you can play very fast? Yes, you can. There's a lot of options. I mean, good T-side teams mm. will excel on this map. Just like good CT sides, right? It really does come down to the team style and how they approach the map. But I like that Ven brings up the fact that, you know, Kadian, he's opping. He's shown that he's capable of opping already on Overpass now. And so the option is there for TSM to just, you know, pull out the vice like a puzzle piece and just fit, you know, Kadian in. And he's going to be able to hold <laughs> the same positions. Uh, played each other three times, actually. They played twice at Starlight. I didn't even notice that one. So played three times on cash in the last two weeks. So very much well aware. And actually, looking at the scores, 16-13, 16-14, 16-14, very close game. So yeah. these guys are expecting to see a pretty much close brawl on this one. We'll see how they play it. <clears throat> they are just warming themselves up. And... You know, obviously all the talk was about Cadian coming into this game, but actually last map, he certainly stepped up, certainly did very well, performed admirably, kept up with the likes of uh, Zipnix, etc. on the bottom uh, half of the table, but overall, very good performance from him for his first match. You know, nerves were not showing. And I, I agree, exactly. He really, uh, he's, he had a bit of a slow start. Mm. A bit of a slow start, lagged a little bit behind, but then you could see him actually start to get some confidence in himself, I think, and that's the big Especially thing. Especially when the hour delay was his fault. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, uh, just if, you, if you, we keep throwing punches at this guy, hey, he's just absorbing we, them all. You know, if we're here till 2 a.m., we can still keep blaming Kadian. <laughs> I like to think that Kadian is kind of TSM's wild card in this <laughs> matchup, however, just because, you know, VP, they know, obviously, we see now, you know, they've played this team so often. So one variable that changes could actually make the difference for TSM. If, if VP, they don't get to play versus Kaden very often, they're not familiar with his style, this is actually his opportunity to really shine on the map because maybe VP get caught off guard. Maybe he pushes more aggressively than the device or does something a little bit different that could actually catch VP off guard. So he could be like the big game changer here for the Danes. Now, whether, you know, even if they get the lead here, the Danes, whether they can close it out, that's going to be the big question here. If they can 2-0 VP, this would be a humongous victory for the Danish team. Well, it is the ninth round. It is going to be down between Pasha and Kadian to decide who is going to be starting out. I would assume the CT side would be the cho choice they'd make. Yeah. Uh, you're gonna. I think you're. You're really gonna take um, CT. Yeah. Although you know which side you start on, I don't think it has that big of an impact. And Cadian oh. does win the duel, so there you go. Mm. Delivers, gets that double slash in and gets the job done. Three kills as well in the knife round, Cadian. Uh, so already performing, going big, as the pistols get in the way, and Cadian does indeed win the TSM's CT side choice, and we'll see how it works out for them. We are going live. In just a couple of seconds. If you just joined us, ladies and gentlemen, we are already one map in. TSM taking the first map on overpass against Virtus Pro, somewhat surprisingly. Also on the B stream, there is Navi versus Dignitas. That's into the third map on Inferno as well. So best of threes running the distance, and that's what we like to see. We love to see tournaments with best of threes. Yeah, of course, right? You know, throughout the groups, it makes for just you, the clear victor, the clear team, you know, that uh, that is superior this day, they make it through. No excuses, basically. Exactly. Yeah. And, well, now we go. No excuses of all times. And Cajun B gets the headshot onto Snacks, and Snacks was the man making it happen early on for VP on Overpass. So for him to go down first, this is big for TSM. Absolutely. Cajun B going looking for kills as well. And Virtus Pro are waiting for him. Oh, Pasha's going to get caught out. Oh, straight in there, Mug. And that will take him down. Neo now also caught from behind. Is nobody talking on this team? Cajun B just snuck around and got himself a third. This is unbelievable stuff already. Can he make it four as Taz goes peeking? We'll try and go for it. Not going to land the shots this time around. He will have to go for the reload. Bomb plant in there. That's going to be over on the B site where Cajun B completely left it. Taz does finally get him down. Now Piali over on site. Will get the drop. And now he gets another. 
further as they push on towards the site. Tascom trying in support. Now it's going to be down to Carrigan. And with him will be KD and they will close it out. And well, that could have been disastrous. TSM started off so well and then somehow, somewhere, they managed to sneak the bomb plant. I think he must have gone through vents. Give us a chance to catch our breath, please, yeah. guys. Like, Cajun, what was that? But also, what was Bialy? Like, Bialy clearly heard Cajun push through. I just don't think that they expected him to, uh, to to go that aggressive, for Cajun to just continue to push. I think that Bialy was just like, okay, he may be able to catch off one guy here, Pasha, but he's going to try and fall back onto the B site, right? He's going to try and play it safe, right? And Cajun just didn't do that. He wasn't just interested. Keeps going. He just keeps <laughs> going, right? So that's the backfire there. Luckily for VP, they still get a bomb plan. And look at that, what they decide to do with that money. They're going straight for the buy. They do not want to let TSM get comfortable here. Well, they've gone for the Tech Nines. It's not the same as it used to be, though. Though, still a pretty solid pistol purchase. Virtus Pro, going to play this one a little slower. Make sure they're not caught out as well. Look at the angle, actually. It's, uh, yeah, it's Snacks. Snacks, look at the angle he's playing. Ready? Sticking back, waiting for KGB maybe to just try once again a bit of a Rambo run, but this time around he's not falling for it. It's going to be Taz that tries to go towards Squeaky. I think that was Pasha that's peeking forward. Bialy at A main as well. Katie though has this covered off, and TSM with a good defensive setup right now. They're still going, they're boosting late. 50 seconds and counting. Yeah, this is really smart by TSM. They don't want to go forward. They don't want to run into the Tech Nines, the CZs, anything that can take their face off if they get close range. They're trying to hold back and make take advantage of the rifles that they have. So here we go. The push begins. It's going to be a straight up A split, straight up short, through squeak, through main, everywhere. VP are going to go pouring onto this site, and Kerrigan and Zipnix already shutting them down. Three quick kills there, and VP, they're foundering, but Neo does manage to bring it back and take out KD. And only problem is that everybody had rotated in so quickly for TSM. VP just not a chance in that round. They just ran right into the Blender. Yeah, them M4s being made use of, kept hold of, and of course that means that TSM will get themselves, I would assume, a, a pretty much a full buy on this round. I say full buy, it is SMGs of course, MAC-10s and MP9s, they're effectively a full buy these days. We'll see what TSM can make use of it, Virtus Pro, full eco this time. Are they going to just pile into one site? Are they going to delay? It is going to be a delay once again, but it's the mid where they're delaying, and Carrigan already there with the Tech 9. They're very close up, Carrigan, and he, he's in danger of getting overrun. He should have an MP7 or something. I mean, something that can spew a lot of bullets here because the flash is going to come through. He manages to turn around in time, however, and he's spotting them out, trying to take the fight. He's going to take two with him. That's good enough because Zipnix is here to hold onto short. He's going to get that nade in. Poor timing there. He would have preferred to have his rifle out in that case. And it's just turning into actually a pretty decent eco round, all things considered, for VP. They only had blocks to work with, and they're getting the kills. Two kills going through for them. That's actually fairly decent. Dupree went aggressive. He came around the back with that MP9, managed to get two down before the grenade took him out. And that was the cleanup that TSM needed. But Carrigan, like you said, perfect position. Got all the information he required. Only had a Tech 9 and he still took two with him. 3-0, good start for TSM. Solid CT side. And that's exactly what they wanted coming into this. Could they take Virtus Pro 2-0 and just completely throw everyone off without device? Are they possible to go that one step further in a tournament? It would be sweet irony if they did. <laughs> Kadian taking some risks there as well. He's got to be careful about that. You cannot get caught out in the open like that. I mean, you're not going to get that many lucky breaks where Bialy is going to, you know, shoot wide. So there was a real risk of him getting caught out, and that would have been a big advantage. But then the flash in, and Kadian just goes running in, swinging, spots out the man squeak, but Cajun B was there to lock down that angle. Really well played so far by TSM. Kadian getting chased back onto that A site, but the damage is done. And that Molotov is actually going to have four snacks out of squeak door. So VP have given up two guys for nothing in return, practically, apart from nades. Now there's only flashes for TSM to hold this pushback with. Yeah, it seems they're going to revert back to just pure skill plays. But the moment Snacks peeks around that corner, look at that one health. Zipnix just tags him straight down through that door. Neo is going to take the peek towards quad. Nobody in that corner. He's backed away towards the quad fence. Smoke's going to go down. Going for a cheeky plant here, Neo. Nicely done through the smoke. It's a bomb plant nonetheless. I don't think they're going to hold on to it, but they managed to get the plant in, so at least they got some money for nothing because it was already looking like a dire situation when they lost those two opening frames. That was really well played by Neo. I mean, get the, get the most you can out of the situation. The likelihood of you pulling off a 3v5 take when Snacks is already down to 1 HP, it's not looking too good. But if you can get the bonus money off of a plant, you actually have a buy going into the next round. So they're going to be able to keep up the pressure here on TSM. VP have got to be feeling fairly frustrated, though, because the shots, they, they're just not connecting with the shots. So, Bialy, as we saw, you know, missing out on the, on the early kill on Kadian. 
and then just kind of following up on that. Snacks getting nailed immediately. It's just not really working out for VP right now. And they have so little gear. I mean, sure, they go for AKs, but I would have actually liked to have seen a couple of Galils in the mix just to give them a few more nades to work with. It's a four-man stack for Virtus Pro. And Dupree flashed himself out there. That might work out well for him, but he does get taken down in check as KGP got himself in the corner, but they do check towards him. He gets around the back. Not quite enough quick communication from Virtus Pro to give his position away. And now Carrigan in up up. Well, they know he's there. Neo's going to go for the back plant. Far corner. <laughs> that shot rattled past his head. Zipnix and Carrigan. They're in a three on two. They know exactly where the bomb plant is, but this is a tricky retake. Very tricky because the Triangle of Doom is set up on the site, and Neo just takes that fight straight up. Zip makes a position to return, but not going to be able to, to clinch it for his team. It is going to be VP getting on the board with one round. But talk about a brute force method. You know, VP go for it. They're like, okay, enough with the subtlety. We don't have many nades, so really what we're going to do is we're going to just flash our way through and bum rush. <laughs> and this is one of those times where running through smoke, it actually works for them. So there you go. You know, if you're if you're done with that, you know, Taz is just like, okay, that's enough. You know, it's time to it's time to apply some bicep strength here. <laughs> well, Carrigan has the AWP this time. We'll see. Of course, had it in the last round. But it wasn't enough to keep hold of him. Went aggressive actually. Went for that JW aggressive scope peeking round, but it wasn't enough to work out wow. for him. Pasha finding Cajun B. That was in the vents, but he did pay the price down to just 16 health but already it's a five on three situation Dupree having to back up what oh okay yeah that it. was over eight that was over eight yes yeah, so like, what how did he lose that battle but snacks is gonna try and get on the site Zimnix has done well and now it is a three on two but these are two very low health players Pasha and Neo they have got control of mid Pasha is going to get around the back of Carrigan. Oh, they look away just at the wrong moment. Neo, though, has taken down Zipnix. Meanwhile, on the A site, and Carrigan is the last man. He's going to want to hold on towards this orb. He's going to try and peek. Oh, he uses the smoke against Pasha. They pass each other. Just around the side. Pasha's realized what's up, but he gets taken down by the USP. It's not going to be the round for TSM, but Carrigan absolutely will keep hold of that gun. But Taz and Neo, they are chasing him down. Yeah, this is the, this is very good here by VP. They have the money to rebuy rifles in the next round. They need to get this AWP off of Carrigan. So just go in, and this is actually going to be a bit tricky here for Taz. It looks like he's going to try and he's going to get spotted from the left. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's I mean crossfire scenario there. You're not really going to make it out in one piece. Well done there by VP hunting down that AWP. And we can see now the effect that it has on the TSM money. They don't have that hero op. You know, Ka Kerrigan can't save that op and then get three frags in the next round this time. Yeah. It's going to have to be pistol work here for TSM. Yeah, you could look back and certainly see that as one of the key moments of the previous matchup. Not falling for it this time. VP with an AWP for Pasha. Looks like he's going to go for a boost. No, he's going to go for a quick straight mid peak. No Kerrigan AWP this time, but he will find Kerrigan nonetheless. And that is exactly what they needed. It's still only pistols, of course, for TSM, so you would assume it is going to be a VP round, but we saw TSM pick up an eco. We won over past just a moment ago. This time around, though, Snacks certainly making his work of TSM. Yeah, Kadian is going to be able to take one out, and Dupree just gets a series of headshots onto Snacks. That was pretty nicely done. Kadian still now working his way towards short. Unfortunately for him, Pasha isn't there, but he doesn't care What's if the, the guy's got full HP. He did just drop the bomb. He's got so little HP to work with here, but Caden, he can try and play for more because Pasha's low. Bialy, not so much, and Bialy's not going to fluff the shot this time. He gets it done. So VP, three rounds on the board. But one thing, you know, VP are really playing. They're starting to ramp up the aggression early on. No, no more slow play here. It's Pasha taking duels mid and then boosting Neo into mid to get control there and just, just push, push, push. Constantly keep the pressure up on TSM. So it's good to see that change of pace coming out from VP right now. Do not let get do not let the Danes get comfortable. A lot of smokes going across and towards mid, keeping Carrigan off guard. Wow! <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just single tapping through the smoke does get snacks down. That's gonna create a bit of a problem. It is still a B-site play. And actually TSM not exactly set up for this one. Dupree all alone sees the smokes coming in. Immediately gets support. That's exactly what he needed. They are trying to still set up for this big play. Checkers does get mollied. Still going to push in there. Carrigan, though. And Cajun B will stop that attack dead in its tracks. Cajun B not quite going to get the second, but this is still very much TSM's round. Yeah, this is this should be them being able to lock this down here. 2v5. There's no way you lose this. But this also worked out perfectly for TSM. Let's see. Pasha going to get overwhelmed. Cajun B just flanks him out, and Bialy is now the last man alive. He had to go back and get that bomb plant, or that bomb, rather, that pack, as we quickly see the replay there of Kerrigan just 
tagging Snacks to a standstill. Snacks never got out. And really, that's that's the, the key kill. Because VP, you could see with the way that they were setting up, they had three guys in B halls like that. They really wanted to go for a fast B split. Like, get up in defense fast and get and just close in on that defense on the B site. But losing that one man, you could see they were kind of milling around after that in the B halls. Not quite sure where they wanted to take it from there. And that opened it up. They put another guy in the garage. Kerrigan is there. And that round, they just got picked apart, VP, one piece at a time. Let's see how they adjust on this one. Of course, it is pistols. And they're going to go for fast play. Looks like it's going to be a straight A rush with a bomb. Hanging around mid, actually, no. They're going to back up. They're going to recall. So they're not going to rush it. Well, it is only pistols for them. There is that Tech-9 for Pasha, who's got a flash and a smoke. We'll see how they make use of this one. Carrigan, of course, with the orb taken. I say taken from Pasha. It's technically Zipnix in the first place. So that orb has definitely gone uh, back and forward through a couple of rounds. Zipnix will manage to tag one up. Goes for the second. That's going to be Piali as he pushes through. One was coming around main. That's going to be Snacks that's taken down already. And this has pretty much been stopped dead in its tracks already by TSM. Yeah, good hold so far. Just winning the duels. Good read there by Sipnix as well, expecting the push coming out from Squeak. They tried to distract. Look at Pasha. He's got himself in the back of checkers with the bomb. So they tried to fake it to A. We're still seeing it is Taz that's actually in the mid at the moment. Pasha with his bomb. Hoping that TSM go for the rotation, but they're not. Look at it. Look how stagnant their positions are. Perfect discipline for TSM. Oh, great information there for Pasha, but he hears, instead of Kerrigan rotating towards A, he hears him set up closer to CT. So unfortunately, VP are like rats, you know? Okay, it's not well, worked, yeah. Not, not, nothing really happening here. He wants, what, what Pasha's waiting for is for somebody to come in and try and clear checkered. He's waiting for somebody to check vents, and unfortunately for him, they're holding so far back. TSM are playing this situation perfectly. Play the clock, force VP to come to you on the site, force them to walk into your crosshairs, and you have three easy kills just like that. Yeah, great discipline from TSM. Not moving a muscle there. So, Virtus Pro tried a little fake, tried a little change of pace on the pistol. It does afford them, of course, now as they move into what's a, uh, another buy. I would say a full buy, but Snacks actually has gone with a CZ. I didn't see whether he purchased that up for Pasha or whether Pasha got it himself. I didn't see whether they managed to change hands. Nonetheless, the AWP is boosted, but Carrigan has adjusted his position once again. This is a very scary position here for Kerrigan. Not sure if he spotted Neo. I think he did. He heard the steps regardless. And there's the Tech-9 point blank fan spray from him. Just trying to stave off the offense, but it's not going to happen. He gets overwhelmed. And now it's just Sipnix here. However, he does have support from Kadian as well. So this the defense is still strong on this A site. Does manage to get one down. It was Taz that pushed up, but they've made the change. The position has adjusted, but Dupree is there. Knew that they were going to try and come through vents. Does catch one out at checkers. Bialy. Awaits at Squeaky. That bomb looks like it's going to make its way straight up mid. Up short, speed weight, straight in towards the A site. But Neo's only on 19 health. Pasha does get one down. That's Zipnix. And they're absolutely certain that someone's up in quad that they know there's not. Cadian's the man that could completely shut this attack down in its path. And Neo walks straight into his crosshair. It was an easy pickup. And now they know. They saw the bomb. The rest of TSM come in support. Oh, unfortunately, he gets hung up on the truck there. He wanted to take a peek behind that flash. Kadian, though, takes that battle with Bialy and loses it. But we are still into a two-on-two. -two. There is still a chance, although, as I say that, Bialy somehow hits that shot onto Cajun, the headshot. So that's probably Cajun coming around the truck, walking right onto Bialy. And Bialy, just, he can be a headshot machine at times. And this time around, he steps up. That makes all the difference. But what a shot from Dupree! <laughs> And now, 1v1 scenario, does he know that Bialy is behind Forklift? Bialy listening to the steps, he sees him go onto the site, and this is so much information now for Bialy to play with. He's going to be able to win the duel, though he will not. And Dupree, he's got the he's time. Got it. He's got it. Wow. One on three from Dupree. Very well played. Gets himself three frags. And of more importantly, rescues that AWP as well. So TSM, what looked like being an imminent loss for them, Turns into another round on the board. Virtus Pro going to be kicking themselves for losing that one, absolutely. And you know what? He didn't even need to go for that fight at the end. He could have just delayed it. He didn't need to go peeking. It's just one of those things you look back at and you just kick yourself. Yeah, it, well, it's also just like that bomb plant position. It's so awkward. I mean, it's basically planted for the guy holding behind quad boxes. The fact that Pasha dies early, that's just pretty much that's the catastrophe right there that allows for Dupree to walk into that scenario and actually win it. And now, VP, I like the fact that they don't decide to force. They just go for a buy that's going to even out their money because they realize we only really need two more rounds, guys. So let's give ourselves the best shot possible in the next round once we buy up. We can still do some damage here, however, with the pistols, but it's just not happening right now. Sipnix and Kadian already picking up frags. Sipnix nearly dies, though. That Molotov doing way too much damage to him. 
Well, they went for the smokes, and they were good smokes, but they just delayed so long to go in for the attack. Wow. Oh, Kadian flicking across, gets himself another. And TSM, as I was saying, they adjusted so fast. They saw all those smokes coming out. Vernus Pro were somewhat delayed. When they just didn't throw the smokes at the right time, I didn't see, I didn't quite catch exactly how it worked out for them. But nonetheless, Vernus Pro have gone for full investment in this one. It is a double up setup this time around. And after this update, after the, we thought this would be double the up death. versus double up. Double up versus double up, but a double up play on T side? How are you going to approach the peaking these angles? How is that going to work for you? So right now it seems like, okay, pass it with the boost. This isn't too bad a situation for an AWP. You can hold that angle on short. You can walk up scope. It's not the end of the world. You can see it there. But what are they going to do with the other one? Snacks is a squeaky. Yeah, he's looking to see, okay, he's looking to see if he can't catch somebody off guard at short. Crack that door open, and there you go. Already aiming that angle, and just in time, Kadian just crouches right in the nick of time to stay alive. Well, they know that he's there, but nobody's got any angle. Taz is going to make his way through mid, which is completely left open by TSM. Kadian just readjusts his position. Aware that there are scopes possibly peeking towards him at every angle. Passion out on the box, boosted up, getting a peek around short. Kadian, Zipnix actually is the man that's going to sneak around through that smoke, through the back one. They weren't expecting to push through. Does have to try and get that kill, but Taz does get taken down by Carrigan. Now they push through the door. This is completely backfired, and TSM in the end just get a clean round. 9 3 the score now. What a fantastic round. I mean, giving up completely control of mid. VP amazed that they didn't have somebody watching Connector like that for that kind of push. Yeah, you smoke it, but there's still somebody who can push through that smoke. You haven't found everybody out. I mean, TSM were holding so far back on the sites for Zipnix to be able to come through and get nearly two kills, dropping Taz down so low. And that was a catastrophe for VP. And now VP, once again, they're running out of space. They're running out of time. This is just another buy that's going to essentially even out their money. Tech 9 CZs, they're just looking for the running gun, and they're going to get it. Possum manages to sneak up on Cajun and take a kill there. But this next round is going to be so important for VP. Yeah, this is starting to look a very big score for TSM, who are already one map up. Could we see the unthinkable? TSM with a sub coming in and clean sweep in Virtus Pro, who they just lost to last week at the Copenhagen Games. Not once, but twice in a best of three. Mm -hmm. Device at home. I know he's watching. He's going to be thinking, God damn it, Kadian. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm doing right now, right? Kadian, 30 frags right now. He's doing pretty damn well. He's doing what he needs to. He's playing that op well. He had some some moments where he was like aggressively peeking, et cetera, earlier on, but that's he's calmed down. He's playing it very well, fitting in well with TSM. And this is huge for Kadian because he takes a lot of flack in the community, you know, across the teams, et cetera. He's really showing that he's got the chops right now. Yeah, more importantly for Virtus Pro, this is... This is scary stuff for them. We, as you pointed out, back at uh, Inferno Online, the Pantamera tournament, when they lost to LGB, they said it openly shook them. They they went in expecting an easy win, which they may well have been doing with TSM, knowing that there was a substitute coming in, knowing that there were a man down. More importantly, a very, very good player down in the form of device. And Maybe they've just completely under underestimated their opposition. But Virtus Pro right now are in dire straits. Zipnix comes around, finds himself one. This is a big, important round for Virtus Pro. They have to pick this one up. Without it, they are looking at an incredibly tricky CT side. It's not beyond the realms of possibility, but it's certainly going to be very tough if it starts to get to 11-4 or 12-3. And Sipnix just continues. He's stepping up personally right now. Three kills for Sipnix. Catches out the last man there, Pasha. And he's even going to get the quad. Sipnix single-handedly hold, single holding down A main. What play from him. And that, if anything, is going to rattle VP. They can't even get through one player. And he's not even like supposed to be the star player of TSM. It wasn't like it was Dupree just shutting him down or Cajun B. Sipnix, at times, he goes to show. It goes to show that TSM anybody is capable of shining. Anybody is capable of stepping up at any time. Well, here we go. Virtus Pro. This is the round. I would say they need, but they've needed a lot of them. <laughs> this is this is another round they need. Let's put it this way, because right now, 11-3. This is becoming a bit of a cricket score for TSM as they start to get themselves a full head of steam. And if it's not the pistol round that Virtus Pro pick up in the second half, then. Almost certainly, we're looking at a 2-0 for TSM. They hold the angle. Cajun B. He did have one in checkers. I can't see who it is. There it is. It's, uh, no, that's not Snacks. That's not the one I wanted. <laughs> yeah, they've got Pasha coming through vents, Neo coming through vents. They're going to go onto this B site here. They've got the bomb ready and waiting. But that AWP is just staring straight at checkers. The second they go through those vents, they're going to be ready. But there is also 
A bit of a fake play going on over at the A. Oh, Bialy doesn't land the shot. Cajun B does get it. The second chance of asking. That's over on Pasha. But they have lost one man over on the A site. They go for the rotate. They have to go for A site now. Neo does open that up. Zignix is down. Bomb plant going in from Neo. Debris and Cajun B have a lot to do here in a two on four. Yeah, this is an ideal situation here for VP. They've got everything they need. They even have the man lurking. That snacks waiting in vents for the rotator. And just like that, very clean headshot. Last kill of this first half, but an 11 4 scoreline for TSM, that's actually fantastic. That's really solid. What the average is, what we, what we expect to see is 10-5 for CT. That's kind of you know where you want to go. If you get past 10 rounds of CT, you've won that half. You've done what you needed to do. So TSM, they're not wasting any time either. Neither of these teams actually, they do have a little bit of a break between halves if they want it, but they're, they're just raring to go. They want to get into this and not waste any time at all. Yeah, they want to catch up, speed this tournament up, of course. Isn't, whoever loses this, they're not done and dusted. They're not out of the tournament. There is, of course, mm. a, another match up. Today we're going to have the winner of this match versus the winner of the second Group A match, which will be happening as soon as this one resolves itself. And then, of course, we will have the two winners' matches tomorrow will be the elimination matches, which at the moment, Fedders Pro may well be in. Let's see how this pistol round works out for them. This is a biggie. Oh, man, Katie, and this is really dangerous, taking that fight with Pasha. He, he comes out ahead. He actually does the damage to Pasha, so he's getting some info. He spots out, okay, there was one guy holding aggressive in B-Halls. That's some good information for TSM to work off of. But TSM seems like, okay, he got that info, but they aren't really going to do much off of it. Right now, they're kind of just sitting. They clearly have a plan in mind. And, you know, it was pointed out earlier that Sipnix does have that Molotov. So we'll see where he decides to use it. Oh, it's going in to clear out vents. There you go. But they don't have anybody there waiting. Unfortunately, they throw that Molotov in, but they don't have anybody to wait and catch anybody who comes out of the vents. So an opportunity for a free kill kind of goes to waste there. Also, oh, Taz actually tagged up, forced to one health. He has to back away. Snacks does come back through the vents, gets one down, gets an eye on the bomb was taken out, and TSM have control of the mid, but Pasha gets down Zipnix. Gadeon pushes in towards B. He's been having this long duel with Neo for a long time. Neo and Pasha <laughs> nearly tagged Cajun B at the back himself, but Cajun B with the bomb. We'll get the plant in now. We're in it to a two, two on two. And I'm not sure if they're going to go for it. Pasha is going to do it all himself. I'm not too sure why. Taz was, oh, because Taz is on one health. That's why he was waiting. Yeah, and Pasha continuing to take these fights. Is he out of his mind? Cajun, just one headshot onto him, one shot at all now. He's down to 21 HP. Taz has only got one HP. And they're going to close in together. And there you go, the running headshot from Pasha. But that's, that's just the confidence coming in. A quad kill for Pasha, making the difference and saving VP in the end. But just the, the sheer balls to take that fight, you're risking everything. Your teammate has one HP, and you're still willing to peek into, into Checkered and then take an extended duel. He's out of his mind. Yeah, I was just surprised. That's why I was looking. I was like, he's not going for the fight yet. He's, gonna, he's got no revenge, no kills, no, no help, no support. But apparently Pasha doesn't need it when he's got that pistol in hand. I can see him flexing from here, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just bow flexing in between rounds. 11-5, <laughs> the score, TSM. Still with a strong CT half. Put them in that position, but Virtus Pro. How different this is going to be, but instead it's going to be the SMG rattling through. Ironically, Snacks isn't the man that gets the kills. It is the M4s that do pick up the damage, do everything. Carrigan with the Tech-9 will get one. Can't spin and get the second, because Pasha's there to clean up once again. And now 11-6. As well as Pro pick up their second round on CT side. Can they get a rhythm going? Can they keep this up? It is going to be a full eco for TSM in this third round of the second half. And now we see what the state of mind is going to be for VP going into the 19th round. They lost a clutch situation on pistol. They just got completely annihilated there in that anti-eco where they expect, they're a team that actually excels at using the Tech-9. They're one of the best in the business. Snacks almost casually just traces Cajun B down through the smoke. But then again, it's just snack things, snacks things, right? You know, he, he's, he's one of those players who just excels in those situations. When smoke is there, he knows, he knows. Bialy, though, a little bit less luck for him, actually. Up close with that MP7, just getting overwhelmed by Kadian. And Kadian nearly picking up a second frag there. Oh, and then push pressured from behind. Nice work from TSM. Multi-angles, that's what they needed. But Pasha once again comes in with a triple. And by God, as he stepped up in this CT side, single-handedly dragging the entire team, which is, you know, if you look at him, he's probably capable of doing it. <laughs> Right? He's one of those guys you expect he's just going to like start dragging a Boeing or something, you know? <laughs> with, the, with the bit in his teeth. He doesn't need a harness. Here we go, though. Big round for TSM now. They've got the AKs in hand. Let's see what they can do. There's the three expected rounds once you lose that pistol. Virtus Pro, though, going with the double AWP setup in the fourth round of this 
CT side, Snacks and Neo. Neo been doing very well with that AWP over on the B side. Snacks, meanwhile, we saw him covering pushing squeaky earlier on. This time around, TSM being very cautious on that A main. They've been caught out once before already. And this is actually off of what happened on Overpass as well, how VP, the first buy round, they just took it to TSM. They pushed everywhere on the map. It didn't work out for VP in that scenario, and TSM are looking for that same, same, same play here. They're, look, they're expecting the aggression to come out from VP. Instead, it's VP just setting up an aggressive hold in mid instead and holding these kinds of angles. Neo, though, not going to be able to connect with that shot, and he gets tagged down to half HP, but that's good enough. Cajun, not going to press the issue. He doesn't want to give up that kill and make life difficult for his team. Well, the information's given, they know there's an AWP there. Pasha, though, just waiting for someone to boost over drop. Bialy. Kadian peeks out. Absolutely done and ready. Not going to go for the boost. It is going to be an aim aim push, it seems. But look at Pasha. Pasha's starting to go aggressive. He's already up through mid. They've actually traded positions. Carrigan is going to get taken down. I'm just keeping my eye on Pasha. He did take one down in mid, but Taz is in a perfect position, but Dupree takes him down. But Julie should not have lost, I feel. But as it is, bomb plant down. Virtus Pro, they've got to go for the retake. Three on three. Yeah, smokes are down, however, so this is going to buy more time for TSM. TSM have now been able to set up with good after plant positions as well. Dupree peeks out from behind. Forklift picks up the first one. Casually oh. picks up the headshot on Neo. And now it's just down to Pasha, who's going to step in and find the first one. But a 1v2 scenario. There's the incendiary. Going to force Sipnix out into the open. Sipnix tries to delay it as long as possible. But Pasha, he is just unstoppable right now. He's not sticking the bomb. And Kadian just comes right over Big T Red to get him from on high. Pasha not expecting that angle at all. But what a shot here. What an exchange. Dupree stepping up with the double kill. But then Pasha coming right back into it. Such a casual headshot over... <laughs> Over toxic there, crazy stuff. But the big man, I mean, Bialy did call. He gave the information, but he really needed to get a little bit more done there holding on that A site because he was able to call. They called the fake because TSM clearly made it look like it was going to be a B split with those smokes in mid. They wanted VP to think that, but Bialy was in position to just turn it around. Now it's this awkward situation here where VP, it's like Pasha just buys an op and he's like, okay, yeah, right. So just a single op. He's doing his Hellraiser's impression. <laughs> we'll see if it works out for him. He got one, but... Already Snacks is down. Taz going to try and catch Kadian by surprise as he comes around this corner, but you've got to feel Kadian will check that angle. Bialy, actually, they do have him covered off in a cross position. I think they know he's there. They're going to try and rush him down. They go for one. The second tries to push him, but Kadian comes out on top. Very close, though. Five health, but once you come out on top of those positions, you give yourself you and your team a gigantic advantage, and that will be the A plan coming through. And the rest of Virtus Pro, I think Pasha is just going to go for the save here. They're just going to back away. Oh, yeah. He's not going to risk it. Unfortunately, that op, I mean, they get one kill with it, and there you go. It was like the surprise factor. Mm. After that, it just didn't really do too much. And now Pasha, that's the thing as well. It's just that he, he needs to be careful with how he sets up for the exit frags as well. He can't even really do that, so there's no opportunity to, to increase the damage. Neo actually did manage to pick up an AK. You're right, they did find that cage and BAK. So this is actually not too bad for VP. They can hold on to two guns. It's still no, very far from ideal. TSM are now three rounds away from 2 owing them. And you look at how delicately they're exiting the bomb site. They know that there's possibly an AWP trained Adam Carrigan may find it, actually. Kadian's going to be the man that peaks first. Neo... Oh, look at them. They're, <laughs> they're all stuck into the truck. Neo didn't quite catch a glimpse of them bouncing through. I could have swore that Neo spotted them there. Wow, that was way too close. Of course, it's a little bit more clear for us with X-Ray, right, guys? So Yeah. You know, we get to see that. Neo, maybe not. A little bit shadowy over there. But now we get to see what uh, we have in store for us here. TSM, good money. Not enough to be able to buy up in the next round if they were to lose this one. So are they just going to go for the all-out ultraviolence? Because they're, again, setting up for this, uh, the cross smokes here. They decide to hold off. No, there we go. So the cross smokes are down. And it does look like a very quick change of pace coming out here from TSM. They want to get onto this A site fast. And Pasha misses the shot. He puts it into the wall instead. Had to land that one, but he's got support. Bialy gets himself a double. Make that a triple as they peek around. Pasha will get Zipnix down, not before the grenade takes him, him out. But the damage is done. Cajun B, the only man standing. And that's absolutely what Virtus Pro needed when Pasha misses the shot. Bialy there in support. Cajun B, his position's known. 
Mika Snacks jumping Shauna Beacon, trying to draw his attention. Gets him down, 13-8 now. TSM still in the lead, still big lead for them as well, but Virtus Pro get themselves a confident CT side there. Yeah, and that's all Bialik. That's individual play making the difference because Pasha missed that first shot, and that's the opening that TSM need. If everything goes according to plan, they just running headshot Bialik down. But yeah, it, I mean, really, it's kind of like overpass as well. Like at the beginning of overpass for VP, Snacks, Snacks, Snacks away, was like yeah. running away. Now it's Pasha doing that, and VP also shine when Pasha manages to get the kills like this. This is pretty much like Pasha at his prime. He's just the frag machine. You expect him to get kills. So when he delivers, VP are in good shape. It's just, you know, again, if Pasha fails, then Snacks. If Snacks doesn't hit it, Bialy. You have these weapons there at, at VP's disposal. And that last round, it was all Bialy. Getting that triple kill just completely stopped TSM cold. So they got one in vents right now that's not being pressured. And that's obviously going to give them a little bit of mid control. They had that double B set up. Cajun B still trying to prod something out of this one, but Pasha very much has him pinned in, I feel. I'm pretty sure he knows he's there, so the rest of TSM not giving their position away just yet. Now, Snacks actually backs out of the vents, so I guess he's feeling that they are going to be coming through that mid. They're going to come through in numbers. Taz holding the angle. He's Got himself covered off, and they know that A is very quiet, so it's possibly a mid-take. There's the smoke. Now they know Taz is going to get... Oh! He spots the rifle barrel. Shot too early, though. Expected them to step forward. Does get one, though. Bialy comes in support once again, but the damage may well have been done. Bialy is not giving up on this one, though. Gets himself a double. Make it a triple once again. Kadian, the last man standing. And Bialy, the last two rounds, has really stepped up for Virtus Pro. Snacks in there in support. Kept his attention. And well, Taz, we thought we thought for a moment he'd actually messed up on that one, but Bialy comes up to clean up. Yeah, that's. I mean, I guess we can. It was. It would. It would have almost been like poetic justice as well if like Sipnix is the one getting shot there because he did so well in yeah. that position on his CT side. So it's like, hey, Sip, maybe you should check your own spot, mate. But no, oh, man, Taz, that's got to be just a horrible feeling as well because you know you're done. You, you you miss that shot like that, you're done. There's nothing you can do. So well. This is, uh, this is actually just so big, though, because look at the uh, impact that this is having now. TSM, it's just these back-to-back these -back struggles, they're now forced to eco, and VP are the ones who are getting the momentum. VP are the ones who have a little bit of bank to work with. Not much. It's still very close, but this is more of a confidence thing. Bialy coming into form, Pasha, Snacks, like these guys, so long as they're hitting shots, this is where it's at. And look at the, the, I mean, the ultra-passive position taken up by TSM at this point. Like, Taz and Pasha are doubling up on mid, and that's fine. They'll have that crossfire, but everywhere else, they're just holding. There, there isn't even, an, like, an aggressive push into uh, B-Halls or anything oh. at all. Taz decided to make up for last round with the quad kill. Yeah. So, well, go not? ahead. You know what? When you need some kills, that's exactly the rounds you can get the bottom. <laughs> and that'll give you the confidence, right? You know, like, eco yeah. frags were always just like, ah, oh, you know, poo-poo, those are eco frags, right? But it actually does make a huge difference in the mindset. Especially following up on that mistake in the last round. That's just you know? all of a sudden it's like, ah, I'm, I'm back. I'm and, back and boys. actually, hold on. Let's take a look at the, the TSM scoreboard. Just, just you know, pointing it out. You know? Yeah. yeah. Top. Adrian, top, <laughs> top bragging. Impressive stuff. What? Looking out well for him. Oh, hello. They're going to go for a double or triple stack. I didn't see which one it was. They were going to go over the top there. They backed away. It was Zipnix that came through. Neo, though, going aggressive on B. Both of them, actually. I think that was Pasha that was with him to pre peek in, but they have control of mid. Neither team actually really have been wrestling for control of mid. They've been just been giving it up and letting it go for the retake. Yeah, one or the other. But it does look like, again, they want to kind of set up towards B here. Kadian's going to run over here, pick up that bomb, and start heading towards the B halls. We have four members now on the B side, and a fifth soon to be there as well. TSM are just going to gather up, wind up, and throw the haymaker. This is what it's all about. Just run and gun, get in here fast. And Snacks is in a pretty cheeky spot here in Toxic. This could actually work. Do they know he's there? They do check it. They do manage to spin around. He gets one, but that is all. And now the B site is wide open. Rotation comes out. Taz is the first man there. Doesn't manage to get the first frag. Will get the bomb carrier. Cadian down, though. Top frag for TSM currently. And he's going to get smoked off in upper. The rest of his team come in support. It's a three on three with the retake on. Bomb plant still not down. Ooh, interesting position to plant that bomb as well. Not a common one. This may buy them valuable seconds going into this, into this retake. But all the members are out here for VP. They've still got gear as well. They have a Molotov as well here on Bialy. This is going to be so important where he decides to use this. But do they peek out versus Posse? Yes, they do. And Cajun B hits a sick headshot to clear him out of upper. The remaining two members for VP moving in from CT now. This is all going to be down to the angles. How do you hold Cajun and Debris? Step out, take those duels, and win them.
And there we go. TSM now one match away, or one round away, rather, from match point. Yeah, this is looking like TSM's game suddenly. As Virtus Pro, they're going to force up. They should be okay. They've got enough for this round, but that is it. You lose this round, they're pretty much done and dusted. 14-10, TSM with the substitute Cadian, who is currently top fragging for TSM here on cash. Could they do the unthinkable? Could they 2-0? Virtus Pro, and at the moment with pressure opening up, getting two, it's certainly looking that way. Taz does also get all the information they needed. They know they're in the middle. TSM just trying to manhandle their way through the mid, but this time, Virtus Pro do fight back. And Cajun B is the last man standing, so what was given to them so freely in the last round was completely wrestled away from by Virtus Pro this time. And now it's down to the patience game and the timing. Does Cajun catch somebody out of position here? Neo peeks around the corner, walks right into Cajun, and his teammate, Neo's teammate, unfortunately, is not in position to get the return frag. Bialy just a couple steps away, and Cajun's going to be able to get a free plant here on the B site. And what's the gear like right now? Nobody has any nades. Cajun actually has two flashes. How does he decide to use this? He hears that he's upper now. Cajun, he's got the perfect read on this. Now, does Bialy drop down to the left? Yes, he does. And the dropping oh. headshot point blank. Bialy just, I mean, he might as well have kicked him in the face. I think he was just expecting him to delay a little bit, but instead, Bialy just ran straight in there. Manhandle, brute forced his way, and Virtus Pro picked themselves up the round. And th this battle in the mid, this was what it was all about. Pasha picking up the double early on. Turning things around, man, we got four screens at one. We got, we got multi-angles. That's how sick this is, right? <laughs> this is that, that's how out of control <laughs> this game is becoming. Production doesn't even know what to do. Uh, that's, I mean, that's wild, but that's also such a key round, and that can really shake TSM. I mean, they realize they came close, but at the same time, they can be thinking, we should have had that. We should have had that. 1v2, Cajun is capable after tuning it into a 1v1. That's a winnable situation there. Now it's about TSM just recovering, and they decide to take a risk. They decide to go for some kind of force buy here. So three rifles, two tech nines, a decent number of nades, and we have to see them land the shots now, but Taz on high is going to get the spray down onto Cadian, and Viali holding behind Quad, picks up two, snacks with the rotation, just annihilates this push. All three members there for VP getting work done. Is that going to cause problems for them? They should... Maybe a force. We'll see where the TSM go for it. They've got, what, 2K, so... They're suicidal if they do. What happened? What? What? Did Sipnix li... What? <laughs> what just happened? Did so Was this like some kind of long-range troll? No, 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 no. This <laughs> is what happened. Mark. This is what happened. Playing at Copenhagen Games, he hasn't hit that one button. It was a landmine. Somebody put a landmine on his keyboard, and he just happens to hit that button now. Oh. What, the slash kill? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the oldest land, like, prank in the book. Quickly, quickly. Bind mouse to uh, slash bind kill it. mouse one. Oh, no. Unbind everything, Zip. All right, that's awesome. Well, that, that's not really awesome, but actually, that's kind of like a, an impromptu timeout almost for uh, TSM. I assume it was meant How? to be a timeout, but... What was that? I, d I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean... <laughs> Sipnix is explaining, I swear, man, this bot, like, I, I use this all the time. <laughs> and Snacks is like, yes, the plan is working. <laughs> <laughs> While they were out during the pause, he snuck in. <laughs> what is this? Oh, that's the first. Okay, so Sip just randomly dies. Now we have some kind of impromptu pause, which is going to hold up a little bit of the momentum there for VP, maybe give TSM a bit of a breather, because that last round was a, was pretty YOLO from them. They just kind of ran out there. They were like, okay, we're going to force, we're going to get rifles, tech nines, and we're just going to go, right? And VP had no trouble at all shutting them down. Well, I mean, two rounds ago, TSM had this in the bag, and then it's just it just went out the window. It's just gone out the window. They're still 14-12 up, but this is going to be an eco. That's going to make it, or you would assume make it 14-13. So Zipnix rejoins. They're going to get themselves back in there. So it will be uh, going as a 5v5, not starting as 4v5. But this could be 14-13. And Virtus Pro just somehow wrestling their way through this game. Like, And funnily enough, the last three times they've played, this has gone 16-14. This is, uh, this, is, this is possibly going to be another. The question is, will it be Virtus Pro wrestling their way back to Mirage for their third map? Or will TSM be taking them 2-0? TSM need to TSM need to break the curse at this point. Like it has to happen. This is now their shot at it. They go for the Yolo buy. They know that they're gonna have to eco here. I mean, it could very well turn into a 14-14 scenario. If it goes to 14-14, though, that's a catastrophe for TSM. The 28th round is where it, it all happens for them. If they break the curse or not, it's gonna happen then because 
if it's 14-14, they're going to be in an awkward buy situation. It's going to be just incredibly difficult for them to get something done. And VP are, they shouldn't be a team to let that kind of advantage go by them. Go by them. So VP now, they get a chance to farm. They get a chance to feel good. You know, get some eco frags in there. You know, Taz, I know, you, I know you're excited about that. Go at him, bro. Whirlwind. <laughs> They're blaming Ebot. I don't know how they're blaming Ebot. Oh, it's probably because his stats are going to get ruined by the deal. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they're just... No. Uh, <laughs> no. All that hard work. It was doing so well. But as it is, if you're just tuning in, ladies and gentlemen, and you're wondering, it's, it's, it's half one right now. Why is the second map underway? Why is the second match underway? We are still under TSM versus Pro. 14-12 the score. TSM... Well, let's get back into I'm the game, guys, because we are live. Right now. Let's get back on there, because we want to see what is going on. Already, Bial is taking down Carrigan, and that was an opener. Of course, this is the eco for TSM, so we're expecting probably a 14-13 score from this one. But immediately, oh, Pasha did not, not let in Zipnik's boost at all, so slash kill or not, he's already been taken down. Snacks and Neo doing the work. What and can you really do in that scenario, right? You just run it, you're just running into pre-fire? Yeah. And yeah, Cadian, I mean, he's got the bomb. So he's kind of got that going for him. <laughs> but that's, 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 that's it. You know, he doesn't have anything else. Unless he pulls off the maddest frag movie ever. But you never know. Yeah, not. A, I mean, we can't count out Cadian either. I mean, he's real. I think he's really impressed everybody in this series yeah. so far. First map, he's, he had a bit of a slow start. And that was probably just nerves. But then he found himself. He started to get those frags onto the board. And he, he wound up, you know, in the mid of the pack. And there's no way he's had time to practice with TSM. No, like, like no he chance. had like, what, 10 hours or yeah. something? Warning? He's literally get on a plane <laughs> and get over here. Yeah, like that's, that's just wild. But he's, he's making full use of that opportunity of, the, you know, this chance now to show what he's capable of. And well, of all the times, it's going to be now because he's going glass cannon AWP on T side. How is he going to use this gun here? Well, there's no AWP for Virtus Pro, so he's not going to be up against another AWP. The question is, will he land that opening shot? Cajun B is the man that's going to be peeking over at the B site, and it's going to be carrying it. Cadian, sorry, that will go towards A main. Get into that angle, hold it aggressive. Look at how VP, I mean, VP have really been, you know, focusing a lot on mid. It's just, it's just almost comical how when they don't focus on mid, TSM are taking it over. Now we have to see if we're going to have that clash, if TSM are going to try and get in there and take that fight. They aren't showing any intent for that right now. There's only the one man holding, that's Dupree, to make sure that, the, that Virtus Pro can't push into Garage. But now it seems like, okay, Cadian, no luck there. They aren't peeking you. Let's see if you can get something done in mid. Are, is he going to catch that man out? Snacks is there. Pash is directly below as well. If Cadian peeks just a little too far, Pasha will absolutely take his head clean off. I think they're going to check the angle. There's the smoke, Cadian. If he takes some steps forward, if Taz takes some step forwards, Taz does show himself. That's going to draw Cadian's attention. But... Doesn't land the frag, and more important, absolutely batters him. Remember, no armor for Cadian, so just that single shot was all it took to just take him to 14 health. There's the smoke down, Bialy already in quad. They know he's there, however, but Taz has already rotated in on forklift. He's going to be able to set up that crossfire. Smokes are going down. It's imperative that Taz lands the kills, and he does. Oh. He even gets the third one through the wall. Cadian is gone. The quad, and that is it. Taz just annihilates the push, and they have had no luck whatsoever running and gunning onto that site, TSM. Several rounds it's been Bialy. This time it was Taz. Just total brick wall. And they have not had, you know, the Virtus Plow on their side. You know, the Plow's on the other side, guys. Sorry. Well, we were talking about the quad that he managed to pick up in the pistol for the, uh, the, the boost of, uh, of confidence. That absolutely was a boost of confidence. That was a full buy-up. Oh, and that grenade just only caught Zip next. Didn't quite do too much damage. Was expecting maybe a couple to go for the boost. The boost will happen for TSM, but it is only... Couple of Tech Nines, a Deagle for Dupree. Dupree does manage to land. Pasha going down with that Deagle headshot. Let's see whether that opens things up as he peeks across mid. Taz going to flash out and peek. Dupree not going to fall for it. Now the rotates back towards the B site, which Neo is actually going aggressive on. And wisely will step away. Taking advantage of that smoke. He is going to hold the angle until that smoke dissipates. This is a very scary situation. However, rotation may be coming in from VP already, though. They're putting a second man onto this B site. It's a matter of seconds. But then there's the man making noise over on the A site. That's Cadian, and actually, who's going to get caught out here. Kerrigan, in fact, the Lurker, they somehow managed to clear up Neo instantly, and they're going to be able to get a bomb plant. And now they have an AK on Cajun B. This is a, this is a serious threat. This is a Deagle holding Taz's position, Dupree. The second he peeks around that, his head may well be taken clean off his shoulders. Oh, he looked away for a second. 
Fantas. Oh, Zipnix, they pushed in. They're coming in at the same time. Capri, though, is still alive. Gets himself the AK. Bomb plant ticket. He can keep them busy here. Piali's going to try and push his position. Tries to rattle him down and gets it. Now it's down to a one-on-one. -on -one. Snacks, this could well be for the game here. Goes for the second gun. Trying to stick it. Not going to work out. Capri peeks around. Snacks lands the shot. And that may well have just got Virtus Pro back in this game. Map point for Virtus Pro. And TSM, if they'd have won that one, that could have been game. That could have been game. That would have taken them to close to 2-0. But as it is, well, will we see a third map now? These clutch situations just not going TSM's way. This is Taz from the previous round. Yeah, Getting that wild. quad, wild stuff. But it's now 15-14, Virtus Pro screaming and kicking. They've pulled themselves back into this one after a horrific CT side, uh, T side themselves. And... Well, TSM have gone for it. It's a triple orb They've setup. lost their minds. Like, what is this? Are they are they expecting to catch somebody peeking on VP's side? VP would be insane to push aggressive now. They're, I mean, they're going to set up, and this is actually a bit of a cheeky spot here from Taz, but it's also a very risky one because it's very common to get pre-fired here or at least shot through the smoke. But Taz, he's going to be lurking. It's the first time that they've used it, so maybe he's hoping to catch somebody off guard with this. It isn't super risky, but he could get pinned down. They've triple stacked A site as well. Pasha with the auto sniper boosted up here. That's why they triple stacked it. They wanted nasty. to boost him up there. This is very nasty. This is not a boost you see very often. And Taz has managed to take out Sipnix with that push. Exactly. Oh, and there's the shot missed. He's not going to be able to get the job done. They don't manage to return TSM. This is now Virtus Pro looking very confident indeed. Kerrigan, is he going to check this angle? This is what it's all about. Pasha holding this angle from on high. The split second it's going to take Kerrigan to adjust his aim. That's all it does. Rotation coming out as well. Dupree tries to come through into B site. If A site doesn't work, let's switch across to B. But Neo is there. Waiting at the back and look at this. TSM already on the rotate. It will be Dupree that comes out. The better of the duel with Neo. They are going to be able to get through and get this bomb plant down. Oh, they're fighting through the smoke. They don't know where each other are. Snacks comes through the other side. Finds one, fights two. This Dupree jumps on his head. Now coming around the side, Cadian not able to hold them off. And Virtus Pro will make themselves back into this game. It's going to be 1-1. 16-14 one, one. for Virtus Pro. And after the T side, you would not believe that would work out. It was 11-4 the first half for TSM, but well, They've turned it right back around. And Taz, like, none of them look like they even believe it. And there yeah. you go. The face palm from Kerrigan says it all right there. TSM know that they had that match. They had so many opportunities to close it, and they just didn't manage to get it done. But VP as well. I mean, both of these teams, it, why does it always have to be a brawl? I mean, it makes for amazing matches for us, right? 30 rounds, 30 yeah. rounds, 30 rounds. But just nerve-wracking. Now we move to Mirage. Mirage yeah. being the next map, the third map. Technically, Virtus Pro's home map, however... That was the map they lost just last week in mm -hmm. Copenhagen Games. It was close, though, even on that map. So, I mean, that's that's going to be the theme here. It's going to be 30 rounds every time. They, they actually believe in the magical <laughs> number We're three, gonna go right? We're going to go all the way once again. You Who know, knows? 30 rounds, you know, three maps. Half-Life 3, where's Anders? Listen, we got to get Anders in here. Half-Life 3 confirmed, is that it? <laughs> uh, I mean, these guys, they're, they're trying to send a message to you, Gavin. you got to listen, Lord. Volvo, please. Uh, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have a third map. Wasn't expecting this one, that's for sure, but no a TSM. We'll be back in a few moments. It is the ESL Pro League, and it is 1-1 between TSM and Virtus Pro.